In this video, I'm going to help you make this simple resume template in Google Docs. It's a neat and formal template that encourages hiring managers to read through. Now, if you prefer to save some time and want to download some fancy matching resume and cover letter templates, then I would advise you to click on the link in the description for more information. Okay, first things first, we need to adjust some settings in Google Docs. Let's start with the margins. Go to File, click on Page Setup, and change the margins accordingly. So the normal word settings are 1 inch on all sides. But I like to narrow it down to 0.5 for some extra space. And then we click on OK. Then we need to start with the header section, where you need to put your personal information. So your name and surname. All right, let's center it and press enter. Then we add the physical address, so the city and state you live in. For some jobs, the hiring men just want to know if they need to fly you in or not. And then we include our email address, phone number, and LinkedIn URL. Let me remove the link. Right mouse and click on remove. Here we go. I would also like to increase my name's font size to let's say 18 and use bold to make it stand out a bit more. Next up, I want to add the resume sections. Now make sure you place the cursor right there and add education, skills, experience, interests, and references in caps lock. Also press enter twice after each keyword. After that, we want to adjust the line spacing. Go to the line spacing icon and add some space before and after the paragraph. Now to make each section stand out more, you want to add some borders. Go to Format, Paragraph Styles, Borders and Shading, and as you can see, you can add different border styles and colors. I like to keep it simple, so I press the top and bottom border and click on Apply. I also want to bold highlight the first one and increase the font size to, let's say 14. I would suggest keeping these between the 13 and 16 point font size. And to save you some time, we can copy the style to our other sections. First you need to put the cursor in the middle of the keyword, and then we go to the Format Painter icon, and select each section like this. Now the sequence of these sections highly depend on the job you are after. If you apply for example for an internship, then hiring managers often prefer recent schooling over working experience. And make sure to put the best stuff above the fold, because that's what the hiring manager is going to see first. Alright, let's start with the educational background. Place the cursor in the middle and add, for example, the university name and the degree. Make it stand out a bit more using bold and italics. Okay, that looks fine. After that we include the city, state and date. Now to align these to the right, we need a ruler. Now, if you don't see this option, you need to go to view tab and select show ruler. Okay, let me show you what this option does. Click on this number and select add left tab stop. So if you place the cursor here and press tab, then it will jump right there. You see, now I want to align it to the very end. So I simply drag it accordingly. Pretty easy. I just need to use bold and cursor style to finish it off. All right, press enter and then we want to add a bullet point by clicking on this icon or enter shift eight space. Okay, let me add all the information. Okay, that brings us to the skills section. Go to the insert tab Click on the table drop down menu and pick a 3x1 table. We need to adjust the margins of this table to make it align to the edges. Highlight the table and go to the table properties and bring the cell padding back to 0. Insert a bullet point and add skills that match with those listed in the job description. I like to categorize them to make it even more clear. Let me fast forward this section. I want to create a bit more space between the columns, so I center the middle column and right align this one. Now once you've filled all the cells, you need to remove the borders. So select the whole table 
and go to the border width icon in the right upper section and select zero. There we go. Then we arrive at the experience section. Okay, so let's say you don't have any full-time working experience yet, but had some experiences as a financial advisor at a startup for several months. Let me add all the information first. And the content you include in these upcoming bullet points need to inform the reader about the problem, solution and results you faced. See how I structured each sentence and also quantified some of the information? Now by quantifying your experiences, you inform the reader exactly about the impact you made. Another thing that's important is to include action verbs at the very start of each sentence. Action verbs like checked, analyzed and managed add impact and purpose to your resume. Okay, let me copy and paste the whole paragraph and move to the interest section. Now, although this section is not a requirement, I would advise you to include it in your resume because it takes just a couple of sentences to show the human side behind the resume. And that doesn't mean you should add some commonly used keywords like watching Netflix, traveling or socializing. No, try to make your interests a bit more quirky. For example, I like football, in the US also known as soccer. And my favorite soccer team is AFC AX. And my favorite player is Frankie de Young. Another interest of mine is watching Netflix, but it should not end there. Cause I need to inform the reader a bit more. So I include binge watch Ozark and Breaking Bad. I really like these series and there's a big chance that the reader watched one of these as well. Anyway, see it like this. It's an opportunity to show your genuine interests and also relate to the reader's interests. Okay, as for the last part, you can add a references section. Again, this is not a requirement, but if you have some satisfied ex-employers and some space left, then I'd certainly recommend you add such information in your resume. But remember, you need to keep everything short, concise and to the point. Don't exceed the one page document. Lastly, I also want to emphasize the importance of properly sending your resume. Now, if there are no employer's instructions on how to submit your resume, then the common rule of thumb is to email your document in a PDF format or a Word document attached to the email. Go to File, Download, and choose the format you would like, and save your file accordingly. So name, surname, resume. That way, the employer knows it's yours without even opening the document. Now all these little things prove your attention to detail and can make the difference between getting hired or not. Okay, so before I end this video, I would like to know if you watched the whole video and I'm even more curious if you actually got the job. Leave an emoji with glasses if you watched the video till the end and an emoji with sunglasses if you got the job. I want to thank you for watching and if you have any questions, leave a comment down below and I'll respond as soon as possible. If this video was helpful, then a like and subscribe is greatly appreciated. Thanks again for watching and see you next time. Bye!